Anyone there? Until we pull from the lake with DOA. Both DOA and Mercy. That's me, they always smacked up. Stupid. They have a kid, too. Plenty of little boys in your situation make it just fine in the end. You're a brave boy. Your grandfather can't take you because he lives too far away. You're a brave boy. You're a brave boy. You're a brave boy. You're a brave boy. Replacing you with a very nice foster family in Brooklyn. You ever been to Brooklyn? They play stickball there and have very good pizza, too. You miss your mom and dad, I know. But it will pass. Time is your friend. Don't worry, sir. You're gonna be all right. I got burrito. Yeah. What about Stacy? What's her name? No, she doesn't have a group sign after all. No, remember the Vanity Fair party? <laughs> no, it turns out her dress is just missing the shoulder pad. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go, babe. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Only two burritos? These are the small ones, right? Uh, I'm not that hungry. Why? What did your boss say? He called me a throwback. That's a compliment, right? Yeah, coming from Mr. Wheeler, definitely. Mm. So the review went well? Maybe. Ah, oh, you'll get a raise. Hey, did you tell him we're getting married? He, uh, he already knew. He also somehow knew that you proposed to me. Oh, no, Marshall. You shouldn't tell people that. I didn't tell him. What did he think? Put a damper on his whole throwback theory, I think. He asked if I'd be taking your name. He did? Yeah, sarcastically. Yeah, but you'll still get a raise. Mm. Hello? Yeah. Freddy? Hey, congratulations! Freddy passed the bar. <laughs> I told you, third time's a charm. Did you tell the folks? <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> All right, hey. <laughs> hey, Fred. Look, I gotta call you tomorrow, okay? I got dinner. Okay. I, um, went by the apartment today. Me too. Really? Yeah, just outside. I, uh, I met the doorman. Oh, is he nice? Yeah, sure. Well, Alex told me a few other couples have already looked. It won't last, Marshall. You'll find everything we discussed. And you prepare.
prepared the documents yourself? They look like the originals. They're all there. If he's anything like his father, he'll be a stubborn little bastard. I'm sorry, sweetheart. So are you sure you haven't been injured or wronged in any way? I'm sure, Freddy. We need to brainstorm on that. I need a caseload. I can't believe you're finally a full-fledged lawyer. Hey, man. You forget about OJ. The law is good, and it's making a comeback. So you're going to hook up with a firm? I'll send resumes, but it may take a while. Remember, I didn't play politics. I didn't whore myself for class rank like some of those clowns. A C average, yes, but a C average with dignity. Hey, Freddie, come on. No Lewis and Clark stuff today. I gotta go back to work. Ha! Huh. What a view. It's like the pond paintings. What? The haystacks or whatever. Monet. This toxic hole reminds you of a Monet? Will you stop and smell the muck? You are always so focused on where you're going, you never stop to notice where you are. That's profound, Fred. It's beautiful here. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Tell me, Liz, have we solved our problem? Yes, I think we have. I love that movie. This new romance channel's the best. Mm. What? It's a chick flick, that's oh. all. It's not real. Obviously not real, Marshall. That's why people watch movies, to escape. What the hell? The remote. Come on, the remote. Mm. I have to go away for a minute. What? You want to be a daddy, big guy? I'll be right back. I can't believe we fell asleep out here. It was my grandfather. It was a bad dream, Marshall. More like a hallucination. Whatever. We never should have tried to reheat that Mushu chicken. I had pictures when I was a kid, but last night he was older. Where is he, anyway? New Mexico or Arizona, I think. What does he do? I don't know. He'd be retired by now. When did you last see him? When I was seven, maybe. My parents were still around. God, Marshall, he's probably dead. No, he's not dead. How do you know? I would have heard. Well, you should find out where he is and call him. He should know about our wedding. No, he should not. He's your grandfather. What kind of grandfather leaves a seven-year-old kid alone to fend for himself and not even a single phone call. Oh my God. What? It's 
more than you've ever said about your childhood. I've never heard you complain before. You should call your grandfather. Kitty, leave this one alone. Why? Because you don't know anything about my family. Neither do you. I know one thing. My grandfather can go fuck himself. Hello. Yes. Mr. Pike? I, you're talking about my grandfather? Are you, are you joking? You mean my grandfather? When? Oh my god. What time exactly? And you're, you're in Tucson, so that's two hours? Right. Um, okay, you're an attorney? Fine, I, I, I don't care about any of that. Just, um, I, I don't know, just fax my office. Yeah, Lindsay and Hall, marketing. sick and died last night. Same time he showed up here. And uh, I'm the only living relative. Freddy, dinner at home tonight? I've got some uh, pro bono for you. So, Marsh, you sure you're all right? I'm fine, Emily, thank you. I didn't even know him, Ma. Well, still, it was his birth grandfather. And you saw his ghost, you think? Yes. On television? Yeah. What show was he on? Ma, please. How? Our boy is seeing apparitions. Yes. The Rubens' eldest son, Martin, has a medical license. I don't need a psychiatrist. Marty's a vet, Ma. Well, still, he's very nice to talk to. I mean, we could be in the middle of a nervous breakdown here. I'm fine. Tell us more about the poltergeist. What was there, a cold breeze or blood from the walls? There was blood from the walls? Fred, uh, how about that fax? How about giving me a second? Wilson Estates is a complex area. You know, we should have been more supportive of Marshall. And then maybe he wouldn't be in the middle of this breakdown. An alleged breakdown. He was an orphan, and it's our job to teach him a sense of self. A sense of self? Yeah, people get that from their family. Yeah, maybe we all ought to go on Oprah. Hey, Marsha, what's the Catalina in? No idea. Your grandfather ran a motel. Okay. I mean, you show me a man with a sense of self, and I'll show you a man who can propose to a woman. It's Kitty. Her name's Kitty, Ma. I know her name. She should be ashamed. Why should she? I forgot. For proposing to Marshall, Dad. I mean, I don't care what kind of feminism this is. It is just not right. Kitty and I decided together. Marshall, this motel of your grandfather's, it's in Arizona. Tucson. Well, motel is being dissolved, and there's money. Basically, you just sign the papers, you get the money. I don't want his money. Yeah, but Marshall, I, I think it's a lot. How much? Four hundred thousand dollars. And if that's true, there is no way I am doing this pro bono. I've always looked up in New York. Hmm. Now I can look down on it for a while. The apartment? You're damn right, the apartment. And a car? Saab 900. Red, tan interior. And the wedding? The best. Invite as many people as you want. We'll have it between innings. Oh, we are not getting married in Yankee Stadium. <laughs> I'm sorry about your grandfather. Then again.
the boarding pass to Tucson? Is it window? You said aisle. I changed my mind. Is yours window? Forget it. You know, according to this, men are less sexually potent today than they were 50 years ago. Fred, please. No, seriously, compared to those guys in World War II or whatever, you and I have practically no sperm. Well, I doubt we're gonna need any this week anyway. We're going for a whole week? Fred, it's a lot of money. This, this Offerman guy, the lawyer out there, he seems like he's on the ball. He wants me there till the deal closes. Still a week on site just to sign some papers. We could do it all by email. Fred, relax. So you feel obligated to be there for the paperwork, but you didn't feel obligated to make the funeral. I also fixed it so we uh, don't have to sit together. Reardon. The attorney sent you. Offerman? No, I'm your grandfather's secretary. I'm here from the inn. The inn? The motel. <laughs> yes, of course. The place is still open? It's still open, yes. Where are you from? Kirk, Ireland. Fred Mitnick. Esquire? Pleased to meet you. I'm to give you a lift. How did you know that we were us? I've seen a photograph. I'll give you a lift to the inn. Offerman has us booked at a place called the Foothills. We'll grab a cab. Sorry, you wasted your time. Up, Marshal? <clears throat> a word? Fred Mitnick, Esquire? She's a secretary. Uh huh. So secretaries are very important in legal work. That's nice, Frank. This is legit. She could be useful to us. As attorney in charge at the scene, I am counseling us both to go with her. Mom. Yes. This car has a big bonnet. Aye, it does. Sure it does. Yeah. Will we have to stop for petrol, do you think? No. We're all right. Okay. The carpets are due for cleaning. This place is really great, isn't it? We'll need some keys. Hey, check out the excellent pictures. I'll give you five to one on a C-note, Peggy. That's how sure I am. You're the grandson. You're a pike. And a handsome one, too. Uh -huh. Marshall Pike. Say hello to the Mitchell sisters. Clara, Peggy, and Cece. Ah, I knew it. <laughs> how, how you doing? I'm Fred. Hi, Fred. The ladies have been coming here since, well, since before either of us was born. It's terrific. Oh, he even sounds like his grandfather. Ooh.
grandfather. Your grandfather held them once a week to keep everyone up to date. My grandfather held them. Please tell me that these people know what's happening, right? I'm sure I don't understand. They know the deal? What's the deal? Oh, shit. Some of these people have been working here for decades. Hey, that's not my problem. This has nothing to do with me. Doesn't it? Fine. Let's go. Let's get this over with. Hello, Marshal Pike. Welcome to the Catalina Inn. Your grandfather, sir, was a hero. Everyone knows of his military service, his business accomplishments in the Southwest, his successful stewardship of this hotel, his charities, his, his role in the development of the Arizona library system. But we here at the Inn will miss him most of all for his moments of kindness he showed each of us here over the years, in small ways and in large. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh... He talked about you all the time. <clears throat> Delicious oatmeal raisin. <clears throat> It'll be quick. Uh, this, this is not my, you know, I'm not the one who did this. I'm not the one who put any kind of time frame on it. It really has nothing to do with me at all. It's a legal situation now. And, uh, well, you're all just better off probably just covering your own asses, you know? We ought to uh, go ahead with our normal reports. Yes, go on then. Reservations? Oh, good news. The Hunt Robertson wedding comes in on Thursday, as we all know. Oh, Mrs. Robertson is here and says thank you, by the way, for the hot soup we left her on the night she arrived. Uh, and on Monday, we'll see the Higbees, the Johnsons, the Duprees, Andrew. The Duprees, a 64 Rothschild, opened three hours before arrival and left on the writing desk. Mm -hmm. With appropriate glassware. <laughs> Tea in the library starts next week and continues until April, as usual. Oh, be aware that Mrs. Hunt has requested an ice sculpture of the inn be placed at the receiving line. Chef? The ice sculpture is taken care of, but I'll need a decision on the club sandwich. Chef hates making them, but your granddad insisted they stay on the menu. We'll uh, come back to that, Chef, all right? <laughs> Grounds? The orange trees? Right. Carlos and his crew will be trimming the orange trees this week. That means that the pathway oh, and the fresh fruit the baskets in each room. It's a documentary. It's a documentary. It's a documentary. It's basically a bracelet. Mrs. Cutler's bracelet? She lost it on property when she was here last week. She called when she got home. We can't find it anywhere. So, everybody be on the lookout for us. Spanish-style silver bracelet. Well, she's left us her address in Seattle, but she's heartbroken. Oh, for Christ's sake. It's been a week. Somebody stole the damn bracelet. Huh? What is this, Never Never Land? Call Mrs. Cutler, tell her that she should get on with her damn life. The sculptures, the orange trees, the rattlesnakes, none of it matters. Do you understand? The Catalina Inn is closing. The inn is over forever. What about the club sandwich? The club sandwich is finished. Rothman. I didn't know or like my grandfather. Just uh, tell me what to sign and where to sign, that's all. Yes. Well, of course, the principal asset is the Catalina Inn, which must be sold. Because to keep it, you'd have to pay $800,000 in estate taxes. Oh, we don't want to keep it. Why so high? Because the IRS taxes property on potential. 
And since the inn is built on commercially zoned land, which abuts an affluent residential neighborhood, it could be put to better use, and it'll be taxed accordingly. What kind of better use? A more profitable commercially. A mall? Well, an upscale one, yes. No? Realized by a major investor with the investment to tear the inn down and replace Whatever. it. Whatever. It has to be sold. Do we have a buyer? Yes. Recently, a major consortium of real estate developers from Los Angeles has stepped in. Well, let's get it done as quickly as possible. The money from the sale will go to pay off the taxes, creditors, um, any fees uh, relating to the probate, and, of course, we'll pay my standard commission. Thank you. The balance will, of course, go to you, Marshal, as the sole heir. How much? About $450,000. Here. You can read about it over the weekend. You said something about creditors. There's some minor ones, yes. The in lost money? It broke even. It's sort of like one of those great old European hotels before World War II. The old girl lost money, though, huh? She was in the red. Grandfather insisted on old world service, which was impossible to maintain at a profit. He refused to make any changes at all, wouldn't even get a computer. He said he didn't trust them. And even this sad business, I was only given paper files. Which reminds me, if you find any copies of anything, I want you to get them to me immediately. Certainly. Well, so we'll meet here on Thursday. We'll sign all the necessary papers. Thank you very much. Thank you. So why have us here the entire week? Well, in case there are any last-minute considerations, I'd like Marshall close at hand. Now, you'll stay in Tucson. Are you all settled in at the uh, foothills? Uh, actually, we're going to stay at my grandfather's house. Truly. I mean, considering the fact that it's about to be sold, is that wise? It could prove, you know, emotional. Ah, uh, we're not that sensitive. <laughs> when exactly will I see the money? In about a month. I'll send it to your New York address. Which may change. I want to make sure to get that to you. Do that. And I'll review everything over the weekend. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Fred Metnick. Esquire. Not uh, the lawyer. And Fred's also my foster brother. Excellent. Thursday. Kitchen must be through there. Check it out. This is your family history. Volume one of your whole family history. My bed in the guest room is the most comfortable bed I've ever been in in my life. It's old but firm. The sheets are new and there's like a warm breeze from the window. It's just outstanding. How's the shoe? Too big. Where the hell did he get this? Graduation? Yeah. Probably from NYU. I think you can call and order them. Yeah, but how did he know I went to NYU? Room service, sir? Holy shit. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. This is the best club sandwich I've ever tasted. Really? That's too bad. No, even more, babe. 450000 
Yeah, this lawyer Offerman, he's good. He's smart. Offerman? I don't know. I guess that name is German. Which means the details will be right. There's a woman to see you. What woman? Where? In your office. I don't have an office. Your grandfather's office? Uh, right, right. That's because uh, she's here to see him, not me. You know, you might want to explain to her that he's dead. But uh, if she wants to hang around, he may actually show up. She asked for you, specifically. Meeting number one, Catalina Inn owner Marshall Pike and Liz Axelrod, Pima County Coordinator, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Uh, what's this about? A complaint. Speaking to the tape. Oh, well, then you can forget it. The inn is closing. Regardless, we're going to need complete access to all of your files, employment records for the last 10 years broken down by race and gender, and we'll want to supervise weekly sensitivity workshops. Can you hold on a second? In the knob. No. What is this woman talking about? What complaint? Henry Pike was fair. He wasn't always by the book. He was hiding me even from immigration. But he was always fair. Okay. The problem is he didn't keep proper files. <sighs> we don't have what this woman wants. What we have is there. The rest is. Yeah, it's with my grandfather, wherever he is. Ms. Axelrod, you better speak to my lawyer. Let me ask you something. Have you been hearing any voices? What do you mean? Disembodied voices floating around the house. No. Okay. Definitely not. Okay, forget it. So have you looked at Offerman's papers yet? Marshall? I may be in love with your grandfather's mother. Your whole family going way back is fantastic. You wouldn't believe some of this stuff. Cowboys and war heroes and mining pioneers. But the best to me, personally, is Rebecca, your great-grandmother, the one who built the Catalina. She was so beautiful, she caused a traffic jam in Paris in 1910. She started a furniture factory in the 20s for disabled veterans who'd been gassed in the trenches. She built the Catalina as a way of keeping them working. I mean, the inn was born of philanthropy and, you know, forged in the uh, crucible of courage. Freddy, I'm up to where... There's a Rebecca... woman from the EEOC. She's looking for records or something. Now, she says that I could be in trouble even if the inn is closed. Gotta be a bluff. Siobhan says that my grandfather was fair.
When are you planning on doing some work? After a swim. Where'd you get the suit? In the closet. Shit, Freddy. What? Stay out of the old man's stuff. And, uh, Fred, you're turning really pink. City Hall? That's it, yeah. Is everything all right? Yeah, everything's fine. So, what are you doing? You got a couple of free hours? Wanna have a little fun? Sure. It's a nice day to spend downtown. Come on, let me show you around. <sighs> Bob, I'm assuming the cactus is in play. Sure. No problem. And the weather sure turned. Is it uh, safe to play in the rain? Absolutely. Hey, there's something else I haven't earned. Continue your grandfather's ashes in the trunk of my car. Now, please remember to take it with you. I thought he was buried. What about the funeral? No, that was just a memorial service. The ashes are still above ground. I've done the paperwork, but the burial's up to you. Dee, could you just do it for me? Pick a place. Well, your grandfather's already done that. There's a small family cemetery in the valley. All right, fine. Just take care of it, then. You can add it to my bill. No, no. This is for you to do. Anyway, I'll take your mind off business, away from Heartbreak Hotel. Yeah. Damn. Here, take a mulligan. Another one? I thought you only get one. One per hole. Uh, if I were you, I'd stay away from the inn altogether. You know, why focus on death? Good. You know, better to stay focused on the future. What's her name, anyway? Who? The future. Uh, Kitty. In, ah. <laughs> Her name's Kitty. Well, you see, when this thing's over, you and Kitty are gonna have some money. Oh, my God. Can you die from this? Take it easy. You know what hurts? The creases of my underarms. How's the salmon? Tastes like sunburner cream. Steak is good. Hmm. You see the prints? George Catlin Originals. Incredible. I met Agnes today, head of housekeeping. She's wonderful. Apparently, vinegar works better than Windex. May I take those? Yes, please. Was everything to your liking? Yes, thank you. Ash, can you uh, box it, Andrew? Certainly, Mr. Mitnick. Uh, may I offer dessert or an after-dinner cocktail? Uh, coffee, please. Iced coffee with, with a straw. Thank you. Hello. Oh, am I? You red as a rasher? Am I? Doesn't it hurt? No. It'll be fine. This was Spencer Tracy's favorite table. Spencer Tracy, really? Marshal Spencer Tracy. Was my grandfather in a wheelchair? He had MS, multiple sclerosis. So tomorrow we'll go hiking then? Hiking? In the mountains. Oh, excellent. I love, I, ah, uh, you know, I'm gonna be pretty busy tomorrow. Marshal? No, thank you. I'm sure we need to talk. Uh, no, we don't. Meet me in the morning, behind the inn, half eight. What a girl. What a sexy, sparky little Irish firecracker. What's half eight? What? Half eight, what is that, 7.30 or 8.30? How should I know? Better be there at 7.30.
I think. Siobhan, tell me something about yourself. Are you curious? No, not really. I just thought maybe if you talked, you'd slow down. I'm from Ireland. That's an amazing story. Ta! Why did you come to America? To go to school, make a few pennies. That's harder to do at home. In Cork? Right. You have family there? My mother. My father's dead. My stepfather's bad. Get yourself a G and T. Let's have at it. Oh, gin and tonic? Where? Fix it yourself. Oh, don't worry. I'm security. <laughs> Why are you stopping? We're nearly at the top. You won't do it. I know you won't. <laughs> You're right. Not this. I'm talking about the Catalina. Claws in the Catalina. I'm Yakojima? Yeah, yeah. Hot as hell. Of course, Hyoto's impending attack was foremost on our minds, but then there was that indigenous snake population we had to deal with. What kind of snakes? Oh, mostly a basic tiger. Green, about, about a foot long. And there's a weeping winder. Even larger, about five feet. Put you in a co uh, check. Put you in a coma, but it was a ticket home. Well, finally, there's Lightning Louie. Lightning Louie? Yeah. How big? Eight inches. <laughs> Eight goddamn inches of pure evil, black and yellow. What if you got bit by Lightning Louie? Plot in Arlington, if they found you. Eternity in Japanese mud, if they didn't. Either way, your mother got a folded flag. Siobhan, the Catalina closed the second my grandfather died. It wasn't my fault. It's also not my fault that everyone here is in denial. Why weren't you at the funeral? It was a memorial. How can you be so cold? You come from a strong family. I have three memories of my grandfather. I remember him angry throwing a garbage can across 49th Street. I remember trying to sleep one night while he and Dad argued about the Tet Offensive. And I remember wondering where the hell he was the night my parents died. You feel sorry for yourself? My parents were hippies who died strung out on heroin. I have no brothers or sisters or, or uncles or You're cousins. You're abandoned in your legacy because you think it abandoned you. The inn is not my legacy. This is the first time I've ever even been here. It's a family hotel. You're the family. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Do you know it. how many people this will affect? Even if I wanted to, which I don't, I couldn't help save the inn. You know, my grandfather must have known that those taxes were unpayable, by the way. I mean, you might have tried this whole guilt trip out on him. I know, I know he gave you a chance to keep the Catalina going. How do you know that? What chance? I'm not sure. There is no chance. Look, it's better this way. I, I have a future in New York. I have plans. I intend to see them through. I meant to give you a chance. Now, don't be surprised, Siobhan, because Henry Pike has a way of letting you down when you need him the most. Maybe it's a family trait. I want the money. That's all. And I hope it's a hell of a lot. It's a lot.
You sure there's nothing you came to talk about specifically? No, no, really. I just was in the neighborhood. Marshall. Look, no major change in life, no matter how natural or inevitable, it's going to be accomplished easily. Things end. When there's sorrow, things begin, and there's joy. How long does it take to melt? Out in the open, a couple hours. Yeah. I guess you look a little closer when you, when you know it's not going to be there tomorrow. That's Augustus Pike, your great-great-grandfather. He was one of the toughest of all the Rough Riders. Rough Riders? That's Teddy Roosevelt. That uh, outfit was badass. San Juan Hill, volume two. Somewhere in the middle, Augustus gets a purple heart and a silver cross for carrying an injured man across 300 yards of live fire battlefield. Even though he himself had bullets in his leg and stomach. The stomach, Marshal. It's the worst. How do you know? I've read. I've heard. But he lived. Long enough to build a future and set up a trust for his children. Also to see Rebecca open the Catalina. Holy cow! This guy, here in the group shot. He looks just like my grandfather. Your grandfather? I swear. Uh, I don't think so, Fred. I didn't say it was him. I just said it looks like him. I won't go to the inn anymore. Because it's tough around here, Kitty. A lot of people are going to be out of work. You know that secretary I told you about the other day, the, uh, the overweight one? Yeah, she's pretty good at making me feel guilty. I know, I know. Forget it. It'll all be over soon.
What trust? What? You said that my, my great-great-grandfather created a trust for his children. Volume two, remember? Volume three, actually. Catalina Trust. Augustus didn't really start it. It was around since God knows when. Well, what happened to it? Where is it now? I don't know. It ended at some point, probably years ago, and it's like three in the morning, right? Could my grandfather have saved the inn? How's that? Well, if, if he wanted to give me a chance to keep it running, could he have done that? Well, the problem would be the taxes. I know. As it is now, they're 800 grand. He needed to value the property somehow so he could afford to pay the taxes. How? Well, I suppose he could put it in a trust. Like the Catalina Trust? Any trust. And? Well, that way he could stipulate a restriction on use. So the, the property could never be used for anything but the Catalina Inn? Right. Grandfathered. But Marshall, this is all a dream. Yeah. You have to sell it. I want the canteen back. How long was my grandfather in a wheelchair? A couple years? Longer. A long time. The canteen? Yeah, it's upstairs. Hold on. this? This is Shivana Reardon. I'm looking for Marshall Pike. He's engaged. I'll take a message, will I? No, forget it. Oh, hey, Siobhan. What have you got there? Hmm. Nothing really. Paper's about the sale. How are you? Well, I double-checked everything. There's no existence anywhere of any kind of trust. It's cool. It's basically a contract, straightforward agreement of sale. Yeah. It's a good deal, technically. Just need to read over the first four pages, sign the last one. No? Tomorrow. Offerman will have a notary. So, uh, you read everything? Yeah. Freddy, everything? Yes. There's only one weird thing, but it's not important. What? The wording in the contract assumes you're here in person. Here? Where? In Tucson? Right. It's kind of implied. In order to sign, Marshall Pike must have been in Tucson in person for at least a week. It says that? It assumes it. That's why it's weird. It's like it came from some other document and made its way into this. So I'm here now because something somewhere says I have to be. Right. So what? What does it matter? It doesn't affect the contract. How long will it take for the end to shut down? Well, it depends on the developers. We sell to Offerman, and Offerman sells to them. They're the ones who actually shut it down. It'll be quick, though. They won't be sentimental. They're from L.A.
So this is your fantasy then? Fuck! Well, that's my man, always prepared. Kitty! I took the earliest flight. Why? Why? No, I mean, I... I... Hey there. How did you find this house? I asked. At the Catalina? Uh, Catalina? Yes. At the front desk? Yes, Marshal, at the front desk. What uh, did you think of the inn? Oh, I didn't really look. The lobby was musty. Yeah, it's just the carpets need to be steam cleaned. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you happy to see me? Of course I am. I know it's crazy with the closing and the money and our future and everything. I wanted to be with you. Oh, thanks, babe. So what time's the signing? It's at noon. Um, I have to go get Freddy. So, um, just wait here. Allison, hey, uh, I borrowed this from Miss O'Reardon. Siobhan. Yeah, could you return it for me, please? Are you going somewhere? She'll want to know your schedule. Why don't you drop by the office yourself? Yes, we have a few minutes, Marshall. Let's meet Siobhan. Uh, Siobhan, thank you for the loan. Great, uh, we gotta go. Marshall. Where are you going? I'm Kitty Lahusen. Hello. Where are you going? Marshall, is this the girl you've been calling overweight? She's a rail. Uh, that was someone else, actually. Kitty? Marshall, introduce us properly. Yes, Kitty, this is Siobhan. Siobhan, this is Kitty. We should go. Yes, the secretary. How do you do? I'm Marshall's fiance. Are you? He didn't mention it. We should go into traffic. We wow! Half eleven already. Yeah. Yes, we're engaged. You're here to hold his hand. How's that? I thought it might be a difficult time. Oh, closing up shop and all. Yes, it must be difficult. Still, you'll be fine. Good secretaries are rare. Took me years to find one. Do you have a green card? Hey, who's in the office? Good afternoon. What the hell? You let them in? Freddy! Well, get them out! Oh, you can't throw us out. Call security. Did you tell them about the ladies? Oh, what, what ladies? The ladies club, remember? Your one and only decision. What? What decision? They took a hard line, like you said. They opted for the Foothills Resort. They said they the pulled out. The ladies club, a 45-year client. Christ almighty, the idiot grandson. Hey, screw you. Verbal abuse. Sexual harassment. You're completely daft. They cannot just add 20 people whenever they want to. Marshall, calm down. I've seen enough. The safari room was booked. There was a tuck wedding, remember? Be creative, you big plunker. Mr. Flint's here. Oh, boy, Augie, game over, baby! Okay, who gets the move? Augie, you tell Miss Axelrod and her friends from the EEOC to get out the nearest door. You heard the man, sweet cakes. Sweet cakes! I have a word. Hey, 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 Yep. Call please for the smart desk. Good. Straight back to the apartment. 
don't bring Freddy. Uncle, I think. You think? Is your name Pike? Marshall Pike. No way. It's 4.58. I'm looking for some information on something called the Catalina Trust. Hold on. Yes, it's here. Really? It exists? I'll get it. What's strange? Nothing's there. Catalina Trust, right? Right. You know, sometimes when a file's been dissolved in the last month or so, the name may still show up on the computer even though it's no longer here in the building. No, it's not here anyway. But there is a recent record of the Catalina Trust. No. Well, then why did you just... Hey, I thought so for a minute, but no. Look, is it in here or not? I must have misread something. You're out of luck. Yes, Dad, I know. I am aware of what time it is there, but this is really important. I need to clear up a few things here.
going to talk. They were pals. My grandfather and your grandfather were ranch hands together. Our taking you in was all arranged. Henry Pike did the paperwork. He sent us money. No way. This is straight from my dad. It was your grandfather's wish that it all be secret. Why? Why couldn't my grandfather just take care of me himself? Because he was crippled. The MS. Dad said he was diagnosed about a month before your parents died. Now, he was told he had less than a year to live. Yeah, but he lived another 22 years. Well, still all that time, the entire 22 years, he's got to be thinking any day could be his last. So what? He should have told me this himself. I mean, he could have kept in touch. He was dying. He must have thought you'd seen enough of death. Yeah, also, just before your parents died, he and your dad had some big blowout over Vietnam or something. One of the last things your father said to him was to stay away from you. Henry arranged for you to live with us. Your father told you all this just now? Yeah, and that's not all, Marshall. Dad says that the adoption and the money was all done as part of a trust. He doesn't remember the details exactly, but maybe, maybe it was the Catalina Trust. Of course it was. I know it was, which means Offerman... Offerman's been lying, hiding it. Why would Offerman lie? Because he wants his commission. Maybe he gets a kickback from developers. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. You signed the contract. So what do we do? Don't worry, most lawyers are good people. Now you go in and ring the doorbell and ask for the contract back. Siobhan and I will wait here. <sighs> Won't be ringing any doorbells, Freddy. What do you mean? What's the plan? We break in, we steal the contract, and we get out. That's the plan? Hey, it's your basic B&E. We're gonna go show that crap bastard that we can play hardball, too. Well, I would just like to remind you that that's a felony. Here, try this. Holy cow. Perfect. Right. That's perfect. Okay. Why are you doing this? Because, Freddy, I am not an attorney, so I respect the law. I'm back. In 10 minutes, I want you to start to cut. Oh, the Lord's for you, all right? I'm fine. I'll claim rush to judgment, of course, but the core of our defense will be Marshall's insanity. He'll still do a nickel with the giggle factory. Abort the mission! You broke the law. I know, Freddy. I'm sorry. Society's glue. Right now, Offerman owns the inn. Technically, but I imagine he'll be signing it over to the developers today. Today? Uh-huh. Even if you prove Offerman lied about anything, once the developers sign, you'll need 20 lawyers and 20 years to get the inn back. Game's over. You don't have any cards left. Oh, I do have a card. What? I trust that my grandfather protected the inn. Grandfather you didn't even know. Right. Him. Okay. So hand me that briefcase. Need some weight. I'll drive. You know, I would really rather wait outside with Siobhan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you all brought your checkbooks. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can do this really quickly. Marshall, you didn't have to be here today. Can I have a word with you, please? Yes, later. Why don't you meet me in my office? Now. It has to be now, outside in the hallway. All right. Excuse me, all of you. I'll be back in a moment. What is this? He made a copy. Who made a copy of what? The Catalina Trust, my grandfather. I don't know what you're talking about. 
You burned the original. You deleted the city records. You sent Miss Axelrod to the inn to see if she could find a stray copy, but she couldn't because it was at my grandfather's house. The house you never wanted me to stay in. But see, now I've got it. I found it. All right, let's see what you have. Restricted use, you know, that might interest those gentlemen inside. Are they aware that the land is only commercially zoned as long as the inn is standing? My grandfather knew I would never sell this place if I spent a week here. That's the provision that you forgot to omit. That was your mistake. All right. What do you want to do? Maybe we call the Arizona State Bar, see if they can sort this out? Or, or you tear up my signature, you send them all home. Sales off. <laughs> Marshal. Don't be an idiot. You take the money, you go back to New York. Ian's never gonna make it. First, let's get this place in the black. Yeah. As of today, Allison will be acting general manager. Oh. Siobhan and I will be organizing any paperwork and uh, sorting out the general situation. Freddie will be representing the Catalina in all legal matters. Yes, I'll be contesting an alienation of affection suit filed by Marshall's ex-fiance. Yeah. The carpets in the lobby will be steam cleaned on Tuesday. Also, I have an appointment with the ladies club tomorrow. I'll get them back. <laughs> Chef. I'm sorry to say that the club sandwich is officially back on the menu. And Eleanor, please include a note to Mrs. Cutler saying that we're sorry for the delay in returning her bracelet. And that we look forward to seeing her and her husband again next year.
Thank you. 